Hey everyone, uh, this is Vibhav Shandalya from ASIC Government Medical College, Hyderabad. And today we'll be discussing about uh, Leishmaniasis, uh, which basically cause, uh, is uh, visceral Leishmaniasis and uh, post Kalazar dermal Leishmaniasis or PKDL. And we'll be discussing this topic under the uh, subheadings introduction, pathogenesis, clinical features and lab diagnosis. Right. And this is an important topic and this might show up in your uh, university examinations. So let's start with the introduction. So, Leishmaniasis is basically caused by an obligate intracellular protozoan which has the genus Leishmania, hence the name of the disease. It's a protozoan. Now, this Leishmaniasis, it is uh, caused by a vector which is basically the famous sandfly, right? And this is classified into different types actually. So, we have the old world sandflies and the new world sandflies. And this is div uh, divided based on the region where they were found. For example, the old world were found in Asia and Africa, while the new world were found in North and South America. Fairly easy to remember. The old world uh, are then divided into the phlebotomous genus and the new world into the Lutzomia genus. Okay, now the phlebotomous genus is further divided into Leishmania, Donovani, Infantum and Tropicana, while Zomia into Chagasi, Mexicana and Brasiliensis. Now, the only important ones out of these are Nishmania Donovani, Infantum, and Chagasi, because these three will together cause visceral Nishmaniasis, right? And visceral Nishmaniasis, after few months or years, may progress to post Kalazar dermal Nishmaniasis, okay? And the Nishmania Donovani complex is formed by Nishmania Donovani and Infantum, okay? So Donovani, Infantum, and Chagasi, three important ones you have to remember, which cause visceral Nishmaniasis, okay? So now let's go to the life cycle. Life cycle of how the protozoan, you know, it uh, circulates between its two main hosts. First, the sandfly, and second, it has a vertebrate host. Okay. Now the vertebrate host can be man, dog, or anything else. So basically, the spread in the vertebrate host is by the bite of the female sandfly. It is usually the female sandfly that uh, spreads the infection. Okay, so the female sandfly will bite a vertebrate host and inject promasticotes in the skin. Okay, promasticotes in the skins of the vertebrate, and uh, this is hence the promasticote is the infective form. Okay, now this infective form of the promasticotes are then phagocytosed by the macrophages in the skin and they transform into amastigotes okay these names promastigotes and amastigotes these are basically based, based on the uh, position of the flagella okay if flagella is placed on the anterior and it's promastigote if flagella is absent it's amastigote and so on nothing important uh, so basically the promastigote in the skin macrophages are transformed into the amastigotes there, the amastigotes then invade the reticular endothelial system or the RES. This is a very important part because the definition itself says that leishmaniasis is caused by obligate intracellular protozoans which invade the reticular endothelial system. So, this is important to remember. After invading the reticular endothelial system, they are released in the blood, these amastigotes, where in from the human blood, the, the sandfly again takes another bite of the human and it, in, it uh, ingests all the amastigotes. Now the amastigotes are inside the gut of the sandfly where they are transformed back into the promastigotes. So basically we made a circle from a promastigotes to amastigotes in humans and amastigotes to promastigotes in the sandfly. Then from the gut of the sandfly where they are transformed into promastigotes, they migrate to the foregut. Okay, and in the foregut, they then go into the uh, suckers or whatever the female sandfly use to bite the vertebrate host again. So, this is the main life cycle. Okay, very simple. Promastigote to amastigote to promastigote again. After this, let's go to the pathogenesis part. So, the pathogenesis will be uh, discussing uh, various features of these promastigotes, amastigotes and so on. So, these promastigotes, now the question that arises is actually... These promastigotes are getting phagocytosed by the macrophages, then why are they not dying and, and otherwise being converted into amastigotes, okay? So, there must be something that is helping the promastigotes survive and being converted into amastigotes. So, that is these surface antigens, which are basically GP63, glycoprotein 63, and lipophosphoglycan or LPG, 
So these two surface antigens, they basically inhibit the harmful hydrolytic enzymes for the protozoan and also prevent phagolyse, phagosome uh, maturation, which would kill the uh, protozoan. They inhibit uh, this maturation and hence this is the pre uh, principal virulence factor for the protozoan. Okay, so using by inhibiting these enzymes and preventing the maturation, it helps survive inside the macrophages. So now we are able, the Leishmania protozoan is able to survive inside the macrophages. The promasticos pro are able to survive and there they then uh, after uh, phagocytosis inside they are converted into the amasticots after survival. Amasticots similarly have GPI or the glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol which again protects them from phagolysosomes and further uh, so spreads the infection. Now these amasticots they trigger a host immune response which is the third leg of our pathogenesis and this is very important and very crucial because the host immune response will determine if the body will be free of infection or if it will be infected further. Okay, so now if the amastigote gets killed, the infection is resolved and if it spreads further, then we get the disease. So this is actually based on which type of response is being elicited. If we, if the amastigotes trigger a Th1 response, which will only occur if we have a good cell mediated immunity. So if our cell mediated immunity is good, in that case, Th1 response will be triggered where interferon gamma is released and this interferon gamma will kill the amastigotes, hence terminating the spread of the infection. This whole process is a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. It's a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction which can be detected using a Leishmanian skin test which will show positivity. Okay, so positive Leishmanian skin test indicates that there is some kind of a uh, delayed hypersensitivity reaction occurring which means that cell mediated immunity is working well and we are fighting off the amastigotes and killing the amastigotes hence terminating the infection so this kind of response will be seen in patients treated for or recovered from visceral leishmaniasis if we are treated or recovered only then the, that means the amastigotes are killed right so basically we will see th1 response here now on the other hand, if the amastigotes trigger a Th2 response, this is seen in active visceral leishmaniasis. Means the amastigotes have not died, they're proliferating. Okay, so they trigger a humoral immunity. Now we're not seeing that level of cell mediated immunity. Hence, uh, the amastigote survives because there is only a humoral immunity, which uh, triggers interleukins 4 and 10, which again triggers B cells to produce more antibodies. And we see hyper gamma globulinemia characteristic very important hyper gamma globulinemia here apart from this there will be a negative leishman and skin test why because now there is no delayed type hypersensitivity reaction there is no cell mediated immunity hence leishman and skin test will be negative and the amst goats they actually use the macrophages now they use the macrophages to multiply they rupture the macrophage disseminated in, uh, in the reticular endothelial system very important they disseminated into the RES and cause classical hepatosplenomegaly and bone marrow dysfunction. Two important manifestations, right? So this was the pathogenesis, okay? How the promastigotes survive using surface antigens, how the amastigotes survive, and how the host immune response determines whether the amastigotes get killed, terminating the infection, or spreading the infection and causing the clinical manifestations. So what are the clinical manifestations now? For visceral or leishmaniasis or kala azar, visceral, right? The name has visceral, which means we'll have something to do with inside the body. Okay, so let's see. We have a pentad, a very famous pentad of fever, pancytopenia, weight loss, hepatosplenomegaly, and hypergammaglobulinemia. Right? So hypergammaglobulinemia, we read earlier in the pathogenesis. Hepatosplenomegaly, because this is visceral, right? Inside the viscera. So we can see hepatosplenomegaly. And we'll see fever, cytopenia, pancytopenia, and weight loss. Apart from this, if we have fever, we can also relate that with lymphadenopathy. Right? If we're having this infection of leishmaniasis, then this, it will trigger like an inflammatory reaction. And we know inflammatory reactions, we get hyperpigmentation, we get mucosal lesions, we get secondary infections like measles, pneumonia, TB. Right? Apart from this, we can get pedal edema and leishmanoma. Okay? 
so other secondary features are lymphadenopathy hyperpigmentation mucosal lesions secondary infections pedal edema and leishmanoma which are basically nodules on the skin so this is how you will remember visceral leishmaniasis or kala azar a pentad with general features pentad ke, and apart from that these other features now months to years after visceral leishmaniasis we can get something called post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis or pkdl right now this post kala azar dermal has dermis dermal in it which means the manifestations will be related to the skin or the surface the, the outermost surface somehow so let's see how so we yeah, are basically non ulcerative lesions on the skin right again dermal non ulcerative lesions on the skin which get aggravated on sub exposure to sunlight obviously we are seeing skin manifestations obviously sunlight has uvb and this uvb will trigger the skin to cause these lesions so they get aggravated on sunlight apart from that we see hypopigmented lesions near the mouth face arm and trunk again a dermal manifestation hypopigmented patches there in visceral we were getting hyperpigmented here we are getting hypopigmented near the mouth face arm trunk then ocular lesions again we are getting ocular is like the eyes are like the surface right on the surface we are getting conjunctivitis and uveitis so again this is kind of like a outer surface or dermal manifestation the ocular lesions okay so basically non ulcerative lesions on the skin hypopigmented rashes ocular lesions conjunctivitis uveitis and these are aggravated on exposure to sunlight the diagnosis can be made by uh, identifying amastigotes in the lesions right direct agglutination test antibodies to something called rk39 antigen which will come again in the lab diagnosis but antibody to rk39 antigen so this was pkdl after clinical manifestations the final uh, thing we have is the lab diagnosis which is fairly easy firstly in microscopy one of the most important points here is this the gm sustain the gm sustain will detect actually some call, something called the uh, leishman donovan bodies okay this is very important the ld bodies of the leishman donovan bodies are basically macrophages filled with the mastigotes something we learned in the life cycle pathogenesis everywhere we know this so these are macrophages filled with a mastigotes or the ld bodies then we can have splenic aspirate why because we are seeing hepatosplenomegaly right uh, manifestation of visceral leishmaniasis bone marrow aspiration why because as seen in the pathogenesis we were having bone marrow dysfunction correct bone marrow aspiration lymph node aspiration because why we were getting lymphadenopathy in visceral leishmaniasis then in P so if a person has hiv in people living with hiv plhiv we have to take some blood smear and biopsy as well okay so fairly simple straightforward we can you can you know remember this with logic as well just remember leishman donovan bodies then culture culture will detect promastigotes promastigotes will be detected in which uh, medium nn medium and schneider's liquid medium we don't have to remember the full form just nn medium and schneider's liquid medium antibody detection using elisa ifa or indirect fluorescent antibody testing direct agglutination test or immunochromatography testing ict which will detect the rk39 antigen remember above in uh, pkdl we were detecting antibody to rk39 here just the rk39 antigen then antigen detection a latex agglutination test right in molecular we are uh, using pcr and real time pcr and then one of the very important tests the leishmanian tests or the montenegro test right leishmanian test or the montenegro test and we already know what this is there is this is the delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction to killed leishman donovani promastigotes yeah killed promastigotes why because we are having uh, so a positive test will indicate people with good cell mediated immunity we we discussed everything in pathogenesis a good cmi interferon gamma killing the promastigote this is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction this is a positive leishmanian test now how do we know it's a positive test we'll see more than 5 mm in durations within 3 days or 72 hours at the site we were doing the test more than 5 mm in durations okay this is leishmanian test apart from this non specific tests hypergammaglobulinemia we also know this will also happen right so we will also see hypergammaglobulinemia so easy lab diagnosis so let's take an overview of what we learned here so caused by protozoans the types 
we have old world new world where important ones donovani infantum and chagasi together causing visceral leishmaniasis life cycle promastigote to emastigote in macrophages of the skin in humans right and then again emastigote to promastigote in the sand fly female sand fly this is the life cycle pathogenesis promastigotes survive in the macrophages and convert into emastigotes using surface antigens gp63 and lpg similarly emastigote also survive and trigger what the host immune response the host immune response will be either th1 if the emastigote is killed because our body has a good cell mediated immunity and this will show a positive leishman skin test otherwise a th2 response where humoral immunity will show hypergammaglobulinemia negative skin test and macrophages uh, will be ruptured and we'll see bone marrow dysfunction hepatosplenomegaly clinical features for visceral leishmaniasis inside the body manifestations like the pentad of hepatosplenomegaly hypergammaglobulinemia fever pancytopenia weight loss and other similar lymphadenopathy hyperpigmentation lesions infections and then in post colors are dermal leishmaniasis dermal manifestations lesions on the skin lesions on the skin ocular lesions in the eyes and aggravated on sunlight lab diagnosis most important leishman donovan bodies macrophage filled with mastigotes in gm sustaining gm sustaining apart from that you will detect the pro mastigotes you will do the antibody detection antigen detection and very important leishmanin test or montenegro test which will be positive in good cmi leishman donovan post pro mastigotes detected uh, or killed and uh, we'll see in durations finally hypergammaglobulinemia nothing confusing a very straightforward topic and you can get easy marks if you understand it in a more uh, structured manner and thank you for watching the video